Welcome to the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission meeting, our regular meeting on Monday, June 18th, 2012. What is first, please? Item one is roll call. Commissioner Scarpetian? Here. Khan? Will be late. He's not here right now. Rotfogel? Here. Sharkey? Here. President Patrick? Here. The agenda for the June 18th, 2012 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on Tuesday, June 12, 2012. Item 2, Commission staff comments. Do we have any comments? Not me, no. Eve. I um, took part in and actually helped plan the Quest for a Cause, which was an event that the department co-chaired for Safe Place. <laughs> and wanted to just say that the response from the people that went to some of the parks to find the clues was extremely positive, especially we sent them up to the Verdugo Adobe up off of uh, Verdugo, and people went up there and said how beautifully well kept it was, but more importantly, that the, we had lifelong residents of Glendale that had been there and, or had never been there in their entire life and they thought it was a really fantastic park and they went to we sent them down to the Adams Mini Park and Brand Park I think was one of the clues so we our Verdugo Park we sent them to a lot of the parks and uh, so that was great and it was a lot of fun very well done and we were at the uh, Adult Recreation Center most of the day that's it Sounds fun. Any other comments? Yes. Yes, uh, Madam President, if there aren't, are not any comments from the other uh, commissioners, I'd like to give um, an update on upcoming agenda items and then a very general update on the status of the budget. <clears throat> uh, we do have a very busy um, end, end of June and uh, July month with regard to community services and parks um, items. on. The City Council agenda for June 26, we will be giving a report for an action item to note and file regarding the Volunteer Safety Patrol Program. We are uh, ready to kick off the program, and so we will be uh, reporting to the Council um, uh, about that. Uh, we will have, a, under presentations, we will have a proclamation uh, designating July as Parks and Recreation Month, and we will have um, uh, representatives from our recreation programs, our aquatics program, and our uh, uh, summer day camp program to um, accept the proclamation. We will have an agenda item for the City Council to uh, accept a $2 million repayment from HUD on a, a, a loan that was issued to the uh, Essentia Emergency Shelter and um, access center. Those funds will be deposited into the city's um, general general fund. We will be requesting approval to appropriate appropriate six thousand nine hundred dollars in CDBG program income. I'm sorry, nine thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, we will also be um, asking the city council to authorize two contract amendments with the County of Los Angeles for our nutritional meals program and adding $11,000 to our contract. This is $11,000 that the county recaptures from other uh, programs and redistributes. And so we need the council to approve a resolution of appropriation to deposit those funds into our account. On July 3rd, we have four more um, council agenda items. We will be making a report on the closeout of the winter shelter program and seeking direction for the upcoming winter shelter program, which is scheduled to begin um, in December of 2012. We will have another agenda item for the Maryland Avenue uh, Park, which would, will be a motion to adopt the plans and specifications and authorize staff to advertise for bids. So that's, that's a milestone. That's, uh, uh, Maryland Park finally coming to fruition. 
We will have another agenda item, which is a resolution of appropriation to reprogram and appropriate $100,000 in our enterprise uh, funds to, um, for a new roof for a section of the Civic Auditorium. Um, in the last rain season, we realized that we have some pretty bad leaks that need to be addressed. While we have no general fund CIP program, uh, we can use some of our enterprise funds, so we, we propose to do that. Then the last item for July 3rd is to approve the 2012-2016 LA County Grant for the Nutritional Meals Program. Um, and then on July 10th, we have on the docket um, council review and approval of the Rose Float design, which will be a follow-up to the recommendation by this commission. In terms of the budget update, um, on May 14th and the 15th, the city, city council did hold a budget a study session. Um, it was explained that the city was facing a $15.5 million deficit for the fiscal year 12-13, and the city manager went through um, the reasons for that uh, budget deficit, half of which was caused by the, the dissolution of the redevelopment agency. So that was a pretty significant hit, which well, was not anticipated prior to it uh, happening. Among the options to address the deficit are a retirement incentive program, uh, which is offered to employees that are eligible, and, and mainly those will be all employees um, that will be 50 years old in the um, in, in next fiscal year and who have five years of service credit uh, would be eligible for a retirement incentive. Uh, thus far, or as of last week, we had 55 employees um, signed up. We are projecting that 30 more will be signing up to equal 85. Frankly, we're hoping for um, more employees to take advantage of the employee incentive program. Uh, we, we also are proposing to close that uh, budget deficit through program reductions, um, which are uh, program reductions that were developed and submitted by all of the departments. And another um, option for closing the gap is for departments to reorganize and consolidate programs and, um, and operate more efficiently and look at different functions that might be able to be absorbed by other staff so that um, certain positions could, could, could further be eliminated. Uh, the program reductions that were developed and presented to the City Council for the Community Services and Parks Department in, include the following. Uh, we propose to move two positions in the adult sports and citywide sports programs from the general fund to the enterprise fund, uh, meaning that rather than funding the programs, either the general fund will charge them to the uh, enterprise uh, fund, which is our, our fee-for-service fund. Uh, we, we propose to reduce hourly staff at the ARC and consolidate functions um, at the ARC and operate uh, the front desk more efficiently and the monitoring of activities we felt we could uh, staff more efficiently and with fewer staff, all the while not impacting the level of services and the programs offered at the ARC, so none of that will be impacted. Uh, we proposed consolidating the brand studios uh, bring it, and bring it back to the Civic Auditorium, uh, which would allow us, again, to operate more efficiently and for the brand studio staff to have support of the staff already at the Civic Auditorium. And we felt by doing that, we could um, eliminate a, a position. Um, so we proposed that. We proposed not to operate the Hoover swimming pool, which, which would save, uh, I think it was about forty or $50,000. Uh, we propose that we would consolidate the Youth and Family Services program, currently run out of Heritage Park, and transfer it to Pacific Park, uh, again, where there's more opportunity for that program to receive support from the Pacific Park staff that's already at that community center. And um, that, would allow us, that would allow us to eliminate uh, two positions. Uh, the other part of that consolidation is to um, 
issue an RFP to the community and try to locate a another <coughs> youth service provider that could come in and operate programs at Heritage Park and and help us um, watch over the park and co and continue to provide youth, youth services. Um, and by consolidating our youth and family services program to Pacific uh, again, we feel that we can have a, a minimal impact on the current level of service. So families will continue to receive uh, case management information and referral services, and we'll continue to have a drop-in teen center, but it'll be at Pacific instead of Heritage uh, Park. Um, we also propose to reduce the hours at the skate park. We propose to operate it only Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 10, and um, not operated during the week, Monday through Friday, except for the summer months. It will be open Monday through Friday during the summer from 10 to 10 in addition to weekends. After the summer, it'll operate only on the weekends. But we haven't given up. We're going to, uh, the staff is going to continue to brainstorm that to see if by increasing the fees, we might be able to um, um, continue to open at Monday through Friday, but limited hours Monday through Friday. And of course, if we do, if we do develop a proposal to increase fees, we will be coming to, to the commission first to make sure that you agree. Um, also, as part of the program reductions, with the elimination, we eliminated four vacant positions in the park services section, um, which includes two gardeners, a senior gardener, and a park services supervisor in charge of mini parks. Again, these were positions that were already uh, vacant. The, the council, if, if you've been watching the study sessions, um, are very interested in minimizing layoffs. So this is one way to, to have a layoff without actually impacting a, a person because the positions were already uh, vacant. And one of the overriding themes of, of all of this, uh, again, is that these are proposals and recommendations made by the department after Carol and careful analysis um, and consideration by the departments and the managers, myself and the senior managers, that these were reductions that we felt we could offer up and um, uh, uh, absorb and, and know how to uh, reorganize, restructure, um, uh, shift around certain functions, consolidate functions, and continue to pro provide a level of service to this community even with these reductions. It may not be the same level of service, and it'll be a little bit harder, but we will be able to continue to provide a quality of service to the residents of Glendale. Otherwise, we would not have recommended these reductions. Um, in all, these program reductions total $750,000. Um, there is a public hearing scheduled for, I'm sorry, there was a public hearing on June 12th, um, and the the budget is scheduled to be adopted on June 20, 26th, a week from tomorrow. The City Council will be voting to adopt the budget. And those are my staff comments, Madam President. Okay. Steve. The employees that are, the, the 55 employees that are taking, uh, signed up for early retirement, that's citywide? Okay, citywide. Um, our, our department has 11 of those retirements. Um, I would like to know what is our budget this year compared to last year, and also as far as the total general budget of the city, what percentage of that is our department? How much of a deficit do we have? What is, what is our shortfall this year? Um, Madam President, if, if I may, I, I can look that up okay. and I can re report out later in the meeting because I, I don't have those figures read, handly, readily available. Okay. In a couple of words, it's a lot. Our, our basically our, our, our deficit. Uh, our, our, our budget is about 11 and a, our general fund budget is about 11 and a half million dollars. Okay. The total budget for our department including, uh, for example, development impact fees in the CIP budget, CDBG, workforce development, the enterprise is closer to $30 million. Okay. Yeah. But I'll, I'll give you more details later in the meeting. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you. I appreciate your and your staff's dedication to service to the community. I think that's the most important thing, and I know this is difficult times budget-wise, and I appreciate it, everything all of you are doing to make this work out. So, Okay, uh, what is next? Item three is oral communications. I don't have any cards. We'll I have no cards either. Okay, we'll go to item four, consent items. 4A, approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on May 21st, 2012. Do I have a motion? I'll move the approval of the minutes. I'll second it. Okay, we need a vote. Commissioner Garpetian? Yes. On is not present. Rob Fogel? Yes. Charkey? Yes. President Patrick? Yes. Item 5, business agenda, 5A action items, 5A1. Motion to approve the proposed Rose Float concept design and tentative float name, Living the Good Life, for the 2013 Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade and recommend it to City Council for final approval. Okay, it looks like we have a presentation. We'll tilt our heads. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. It's straight okay, up. It looks perfect on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, <laughs> President Patrick. Um, Members of the Commission, my name is Teresa Alexani. I'm Executive Analyst for the Community Services and Parks Department. On March 6th, uh, City Council appropriated $100,000 for the 2013 Rose Float, authorized a contract with the Phoenix Decorating Company for design and construction of the float, and authorized staff to work with corporate sponsors to raise funds and form a Rose Float Concept Design Committee comprised of staff and sponsors to um, select a design that represents Glendale. At this time, staff has secured two corporate sponsors, Glendale Adventist Medical Center and the Americana at Brand for a total of $60,000 and is hoping to secure at least one more sponsor by the end of the month. Roseville Concept Design Committee reviewed numerous potential designs um, working alongside the, uh, with Phoenix Decorating, looking at um, Central designs for the for Glendale's float for this year. The committee has worked closely with Phoenix to develop a design that best represents the 2013 parade theme, all the places you'll go, and the city of Glendale and corporate sponsors. The committee's proposed uh, float concept design rendering is behind me, and uh, the co although the committee has selected the fly final float design concept, staff is still hoping to. Uh, secure one more sponsor whose um, a representation of that sponsor will be somehow incorporated into the existing design. So this is pretty much final with hopes of adding one more sponsor. Um, staff, uh, the Roosevelt Concept Design Committee has also um, come up with a tentative name, uh, which is Living the Good Life, that goes along with the float design. Staff is recommending the commission approve the committee's uh, recommend, recommended float design and name for the uh, 2013 float and also recommended to city council for approval. Marie Abrams, director of marketing with Glendale Adventist Medical Center, uh, who is also on the Rose Float Concept Design Committee, is also here and will give a brief presentation on what the, um, what the design means to the city, the, the um, and also to the sponsors. Thank you. Hi. Um, it's very uh, nice to be here. As you said, my name is Mari Abrams, and I work with Glendale Adventist Medical Center. And it is a, truly an honor for us to be part of such a fantastic float. We were very excited to see this float come together. We feel like it really represents the community. It represents the joy, the excitement, the energy that's built up inside the community. And it really teases some of what the city has to offer, looking at the hospital, looking at the Alex Theater, the Americana, and the trolley at the Americana really is a central focal point. Um, it's something that differentiates our town from others. Um, 
we feel like it really was a great representation of a community coming together that it showed uh, the corporate sponsors working in line with the city, working together, maybe with groups that they hadn't worked with uh, previously. And uh, for Glendale Adventist, it really gives us an opportunity to help showcase our messages on a national level, the importance of living healthy and seeking medical treatment before now rather than putting it off to when things get too difficult. So really, we wanted to focus our messages on things that affected lots of people and many people out uh, in our country and actually in the world as it gets um, broadcast around the world. Um, it was exciting to see that the Alex Theater, we were able to highlight the Alex Theater in the design. Of course, the Americana, as I had said, with the trolley. And then different images uh, that represented good health and represented people getting action and taking action for their health. We really feel like all of those come together as the good life. You go to the Americana and you feel like you're a part of the good life. And there's retail shopping going on. Um, <clears throat> you take care of your health. You're able to live that good life. So it just opened up the opportunities. It was really a fantastic representation of all that we felt that we were trying to put into the float. It's been fantastic to work with this committee, the energy in the room and the excitement, the pride and the passion that you just see. When we saw this float design in its initial concepts, we did adjust it slightly. Um, we knew that this really, this said Glendale to all of us. Um, we tried to make other things work. We tried to look at other options, but this, we kept coming back to it. It was a beautiful, engaging float that really said the city to us. Thank you. Uh, we also have um, representatives from Phoenix decorating. If you guys have any questions, if um, we're here to answer any questions you may have. Um, let me just start out by thanking the sponsors for coming forward and, and really helping out with this float. We've been in the Rose, Glendale's been in the Rose Parade since 1915. This is the 99th year. So it's, it's, it's really important and exciting that we can continue. So I, I really do appreciate the sponsors for stepping up and helping us with this. Are there any questions or comments? I have a, a comment in that this is a refreshing change. And again, I'd also like to read it, thanking Glendale Adventist and the Americana and whoever hopefully our third sponsor will be. Uh, means a lot, and it's, it's going to be a beautiful float. And I understand Councilman Weaver is still going to be a crew chief or managing it. So, <laughs> so uh, all around, it's going to be great. And I know this means a lot to so many people. So thanks. Steve? Well, I also want to add my thanks to the sponsors, but more importantly, or just as important, I, I used to be on the Rose Float Committee, and this is one of the best concepts I've seen in a long time, and I really, really love it. I do have a couple of questions about the design, though. Are there anything on the back sides of the panels that will represent Glendale? Is it, or is it just the pictures that we see here. There's, there's other artwork that we, what we did explored, um, explored a lot of different, different artwork. What we featured on the, what we call the camera side of the float was some of the really iconic things that were important to not only the hospital but were important to the city. There are other great pictures of the hospital and some other iconic things in the city that we will be putting on the back sides. Can you state your name just for the record? I'm sorry, Chris Lofthouse, <laughs> and I'm with Phoenix Decorating Company. Thank you. Okay, and I've got a couple other questions. Um, the trolley, is it an actual trolley or is it a uh, representation? It is a, is a representation of a trolley that we're actually building at our shop. It will hold um, probably 10 people, so it's, it's just a th like a three quarter version of it. Um, it should show some great detail and be just as ornate as the real one. And is there a reason, the way I'm looking at this, the trolley where the people are, it doesn't look like they're on the camera side of the float. It looks like the uh, Alex Theater and that mural is on the camera side. To get a, uh, a, th a float that's actually three-dimensional in a two-dimensional drawing, what you're seeing, we're trying to show as much in the drawing as we can. The trolley is actually more on center. 
um, and then the way we've positioned the, 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 the film reels behind it, we've, we've positioned so that everything can be seen from both sides. Great. And my last question, the stars in the back um, and the what looks like Klieg lights, what are those made of? Those are actually um, structures that we are going to we are going to build beams of light, and then from those we're going to take monofilament line, and on those monofilament lines we'll actually take dendrobiums, white dendrobes, and linaria, and we'll actually decorate it in flowers. And those particular those are the those are the lights, and those will also be animated, so those will be moving. Oh. And which award are we going to win? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I stopped guessing that a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. no, this good is floats, good floats will take banners, and what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, with the community involvement, we're going to have a good time with this and show that the, the judges that were that were involved and having a great time with it, and that in itself will, uh, will bring a banner. No, this is a this is a great float. Yeah, it's an award winner. It, it really looks. You heard like it one. here. <laughs> Thank you very much for your Thank hard you. work. I have a quick question, yes, too, if you don't mind. I would like to thank you as well for this great design. This represents the entire community, as was well put, well mentioned, uh, from Americana to Alex Theater to uh, Glendale Adventist. And uh, the sponsors, they've been a part of our community for a long time. Uh, a quick question. Is that a roll of film in the back? That's what, correct. That's exactly is that, that's, what that represents, building. like, Disney, uh, Disney or... or what? Part of, it's, it is part of Glendale. Part of... Part of Glendale is right. is animation, so we right. showed, we wanted to represent right. that as well. It also gives us it gave us some flexibility and some opportunities for maybe down the line. Right, I think this will satisfy um, many people out there that it's always uh, asked, is this float representing Glendale or not? And I think this one does, especially the Alex Theater in the center as a, a big big monument or a landmark of Glendale. It's it's a, it's a great design. Thank you very much. Just over the stairs. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Do we have a motion? I'd be happy to move. I this. have a question before you make the, the yes. motion. Okay, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm all for this design. It's really nice. This is the first time that I've seen this design. But my question is, uh, is this commission somewhat involved in, is any of us part of the, the committee or, because, uh, and what is our role of, uh, approving this to go to the council? Is that what it is? Yes, we are. Teresa, you want to answer that? Go right ahead. <laughs> um, well, we always come to the commission first for recommendation to city council. So, um, yes, your role would be if you do agree and, and like the design to go ahead and recommend for city council to approve the design. But um, the commission is not part of the spon um, part of the Roseville Concept Design Committee. This last year, um, we, we had gone to council and we had changed the makeup of the, the committee that comes up with the design mm -hmm. and had asked for council authorization to incorporate the corporate sponsors and um, along with staff to come up with the design. So that's how this, uh, committee was made up this year. It was um, made up of corporate sponsors and uh, department staff. And this is a final design? This, is, this design is approved by the committee already? The committee, right. right. The committee is recommending it to the commission, who will then approve it and recommend it to city council for approval. Because uh, ultimately city council does have the final authority. But realizing authority. that if there's another sponsor that comes in, there will be some changes made to reflect that other sponsor. Correct. Right. Such, as, such as adding something to the film rolls or to one of the other panels that we can't quite see or maybe where the doctor is or move that panel. But Commissioner Raffo, you still have time. <laughs> <laughs> I have time, no money, but I have time. I'll move the... Uh, Acceptance of the uh, rose float design with uh, and a recommendation to the council. I'll second it. Take roll call. Commissioner Scarpetian. Okay. Yes. John is not present. Rob Fogel. Yes. Darkey. Yes. President Patrick. Yes. How do I ride on it? <laughs> okay. Do people get to pay to ride on it this year? No. That's how we'll make. <clears throat> Funds them, money. I hope. I guess we're not getting a we're not getting a commitment to that. So you, you're probably not so. going to get to ride on it. That's okay. I, they haven't allowed me before. Either. Okay. 
Well, we don't want to break tradition. That's that right. Tradition. Okay. Thank you again for the report and bringing in the larger photo so we could take a look at it. We appreciate that. Thanks very much. Okay. What's next? Item 5B, reports information only. 5B1, monthly activity reports at A, human services. Good afternoon, President Patrick, members of the commission, department staff, and uh, Glenda audience out there. My name is Walter Alvarez, and I'm the uh, program supervisor for the Youth and Family Services Program. Uh, the program has been in operation in, Glen in the Glenda community for 11 years now. Uh, we are the information and referrals hub for the community. What we intend to do, I'm going to walk you through the slide here and kind of explain to you what, what our goal is and what our mission is within our department, within our program. Uh, we seek to serve the youth and families of Glenda by linking them with community-based social services, so, social service providers as well as public agencies. Uh, our, our goal, again, is to really inform the community members of the very myriad social services out there to address issues, address and improve quality of life for our residents. Um, sorry. Our goal is to make existing resources accessible, accessible to our community with a strong emphasis on programs and services where youth, families, and community members can find advice, guidance, and support to improve the quality of life. That is ultimately our goal, improve quality of life. Um, how do we achieve this? There's four components within our program that we execute and we try to execute them effectively. And those are outreach, information and referrals, case management, and a new component we added this year is teen drop-in, life skills development activities. Um, outreach, what does that consist of? It really consists about our uh, staff going out and reaching and informing the um, residents, especially at-risk youth, about the services. We partner with uh, the Pasadena Juvenile Court, our LA County Probation Department, our Glenda Unified School District's uh, Student Attendance Review Board. Our staff attend these meetings, hear the issues of these families, and we become supportive to inform them of the services because a lot of times they try to say, well, who's out there to help them? What is the safety net in the community? We are, uh, our staff is very knowledgeable with a lot of the nonprofits. We work collaboratively. Um, that is the outreach component as well, letting them know that we are out there, that the community is out there reaching and needing our services. They come to us, provide us their flyers, provide us their services, and our, our goal is to feed them, um, the residents in the community who need issues. And the next component is information and referrals. That sometimes become, it becomes a one-time um, information type service where someone could visit our office, they could call our office staff and may be in need of a service. Uh, they can need anger management, parenting education classes, they may have housing issues and they don't know where to call. That's where we'll pick up the phone and just inform them of the staff who is out there in the community, provide them, it's not just about providing them a number, it's really providing them a name, a contact, a date, a time that they can make contact with individuals in the community. There's nothing more frustrating than to call and get a voicemail or to call and say they don't speak my language. So that's where we, come, we, we become multicultural to some degree. We do have Armenian speaking staff, Spanish speaking staff that is available there to kind of break those obstacles and barriers that help them get linked to those services. Uh, the other component is case management. Case management is done to at-risk youth. Um, on a needed basis. It's really about identifying four issues or three issues that we could tackle um, short term and long term. Um, give you an example, a kid could come into our office saying, you know, um, I need to improve my grades. I need to get linked with community service because my probation mandates require it. And at the same time, um, you know, my parents need to complete parenting education classes, and that's where the staff then identifies three goals 
and meet, uh, try to set objectives to meet those goals. And it's usually done within a three month to f uh, six month time frame, depending on the need of the child. Sometimes it may take it a longer, sometimes these kids get detained again by their probation, they violate their conditions. So it's, it is a time consuming effort to do the case management. Nonetheless, we do it effectively. We target an estimated 30 uh, youth per year, and these are high risk youth. And our goal is to accomplish at least 50 percent success rate, meaning that 15 kids will comply with an individual case plan. Uh, case plan means g making an in-depth assessment, getting everyone involved, all the stakeholders who, who uh, play a role in the life of these kids, the parents, from the parents, the school district, the probation officer, mental health care providers. We really sit down with all these providers and communicate and try to make a, an appropriate case plan for, for the minors. The teen drop-in skills, life, life skills activities, again, that's a new component. What we find is that sometimes these kids are just out there congregating in our parks. And this is through our outreach efforts. We, we identify them, and they say, well, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to go. There's nowhere to do. Uh, there's no activities to keep us busy. So what we've done, we've opened our doors every Wednesday from um, 3.30 to 5.30. We open our doors to the kids to come in and do life skills development activities. Um, through, through those efforts, uh, if, if you see on the slide, we were able to get some kids to participate in the, uh, to train in the Verdugos 10K. Uh, <laughs> we, we secured some sponsors, thanks to Mark and his group. Uh, Runnergy was the sponsor who provided these kids with running shoes, uh, running apparel. We identified them, but we realized these kids don't have anything to, to really succeed and, and feel good about, so thanks to the sponsors there. Uh, this year, in August uh, of last year, 2011, we took them to Griffith Park. Some kids have never been horseback riding, so this is an opportunity to, for them to engage. Um, this is a team drop-in activities, providing a safe place. But what we realize is they, they have a lot of energy. They have a lot of energy, and we have to find a way to exhaust it, because we always say idle minds trouble minds. We have to really keep them busy at all times, and that's what we've realized, that in our park, our lovely Glendale Heritage Park was becoming a nuisance to some of the neighbors because some of these kids were just hanging out, engaging in negative behavior, deviant behavior to some degree. So we said, let's open our doors, and it's changed the, the aspect of how they, it's perceived now. A lot of kids really come in. And, um, and again, it's, it's not just Wednesdays. Kids could drop in at any time. Some kids are there. You know, they just come in and want to do some community service, want to talk to staff, want to discuss issues. Um, today, for example, uh, if I could just introduce someone from the audience, this is Krista. Krista was in our office today, and I told her where I was going, and she wanted to come by and observe. So, again, gives her the opportunity to see how government works. And we use those opportunities to really develop skills. Um, what we develop with the um, life skills is we develop the passport. We identify certain issues that the kids are facing and we develop seminars and workshops. We don't develop them. There's people in the community that do these already. We basically provide them the audience. We could identify and provide them at minimum 15 to 20 youth to address certain issues um, that these uh, providers are already doing. They have curriculums. As long as the kids participate in these activities, they get to earn outings. And this is one of the outings they got to go to on uh, back June, uh, last, last, well, this month, early, actually, early this month. Um, our uh, development supervisor right there, Moises Carrillo, also joined along. Uh, we took about, I think this was 14 youth that participated in this outing. Uh, we all went mountain biking, and again, some of them have never had the experience of mountain biking, so they greatly enjoy doing that. Educational nature lessons as well were included. Great, great activity. Um, they also engage in community service hours. They take community pride. This is at Duke Majin Park, where they uh, went and watered some of the, the plant life out there. Conducting community service again, taking pride at the Glendale Heritage Garden, upkeeping those benches, those teak benches, neat upkeep. And these kids provide a viable, they're a viable resource, to, resource for us to maintain these ben benches. They sand them, we teach them that skill of sanding, cleaning, prepping, and polishing the tables. So it's a great skill for them to learn. Um, and they take community pride again, they understand that they shouldn't be damaging their, their benches and their park. Um, another outing, again, 
I go back to keeping in focus, and this is a, an example of a positive result as well through our outreach. Uh, through here, we took t uh, 34 youth uh, to participate in this teen summit on dating violence and bully prevention at the LA Convention Center. Uh, they said, well, let's do a workshop here at Glendale. Let's provide it. Let's provide a seminar. But we said, you know, LA Convention's doing one. All we have to do is provide transportation and take them to this event. There was an estimated 400 youth at this event, so it was great to see the community come together. It's not just a Glendale issue, it's really a LA County wide issue, it's a national issue that needs to be addressed. So it was good to see that all these kids came together for this event. Um, that concludes my presentation on the slide, but again, it, it is a rewarding um, component uh, aspect of this job at all times, as long as we could change one kid, you know, it, it, we take great pride in doing that because you never know where this kid's life's going to take them and who they're going to impact later on. And um, that really concludes my presentation, unless there's any questions. Any questions? I have a comment and a question. Uh, yes. The question is, with Heritage, uh, it'll still be open, but you'll the offices will be over at Pacific? Is, where will you be? I will be at Pacific okay, Community Center. So what's happening at Heritage? The, the kids can still drop in there. Did you say there would be someone there? or The, the programs will be, the staff and the programs will be transferred to Pacific Park Community Center. Um, we will, our plan is to issue an RFP to the community and, and, and try to find a nonprofit organization that also provides um, at-risk youth services and have them um, use the, the building uh, free of charge in exchange for them um, oh, okay. providing services and, and helping us watch over the park. That's our ultimate goal. And, and we feel that the community will be better off that way because we'll still have our programs at Pacific Park and and we'll have additional programs offered by another nonprofit organization. Okay, and my comment is when Walter mentioned the 10K and some of the youth training going up the three, Walter was right there <laughs> behind yes. them, trudging along. <laughs> but, I was trying uh, to keep up. Yeah, and, and I know you do that in every single program. So, uh, but that was the perfect example of how you're in there with the kids. Thank and you. they were way ahead of you, but. You yes. were there for them. I was trying to great. push them. <laughs> it's more like oh. they were pushing me up that hill. Thank you for all them. you do. Yeah. Getting back to um, Heritage Park and that building, have we identified anyone or has it showed any interest yet? We, we have to issue a request for proposal, RFP. And, and Walter, you said something about if we can affect the life of one of our Glendale youth. I've known you for a long time and I know your passion for um, our kids and I know that you have affected many more than just one or two kids. You do a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I just want to welcome Krista. Thanks so much for coming. I hope that you learned something <laughs> or had a good time. She's not, she's not responding, so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But welcome. Go <laughs> dissect it once we get back to the office. So should should we move to adjourn now? <laughs> oh, hi, Rodney. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, we need to show that Rodney has arrived. And what is next? Next, we have item five B one B, park planning and development. President Pat Patrick, members of the Commission, um, this time I don't have anything exciting to show you. However, I'm excited to tell you that we have four projects currently out to bid. Uh, you may recall that we released three, uh, four projects in the last month, uh, two of which are the trails projects at the sports complex. And uh, we also have the security gates at the Brand Library, as well as the security gates and park improvements at the car park. All four of those will be, uh, the bids are due very soon, and we anticipate awarding those bids in early July and soon after starting construction. Also in late July, early August, we anticipate releasing two new projects uh, for bidding. One would be the Catalina Verdugo 
uh, Adobe, as well as the Maryland uh, uh, Park. So we're ho hoping that we'll come back to you in a few months with some exciting uh, contractors on board starting construction on six new projects. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Any questions or comments? What's the cross street at Durand? I don't think I've ever seen that. It's Durand and Central. Durand. And Central? Yes. Okay. It's just uh, on the east side of, uh, I believe it's before you get to Columbus, at Durand Gardens, right? Central? Yeah. I have to go see. And if, you, yeah. if you're driving down Doran, the, the, it's on the it's, north it's on side, the north but side. you'll also see that the, the houses, I think, the low income housing is already built. Yes, those houses are being provided for first time home buyers. Uh, it's an exciting joint project that has a park uh, component to it. It's a nice looking building, too. Very nice. Yeah. Nice project. Okay, I have to now, is this project almost finished? It's almost finished and ready to turn over. Okay, yep. great. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your report. And what is next? Item 5B1C, Workforce Development. Good afternoon. Here you are. <laughs> there I am, hiding over here on the side. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, President Patrick and Commissioners. Um, Don Nakamoto, the... Um, Administrator of Workforce Development. Uh, I'm going to start out with some positive news. Um, we had a veterans grant to train, uh, I think it was 112 uh, local veterans for um, new careers and uh, employment opportunities. Uh, about a week ago, we had our first class that uh, completed uh, machinist training at uh, Glendale Community College. We had 12 students that completed that. And uh, the day after the completion of the training in our graduation program, uh, three were offered jobs and another, I think at least three, had uh, job interviews lined up. So it looks like a pretty good start to that program. We're really happy that we could uh, do something for the uh, veterans in our uh, community. Uh, also, um, recently the Workforce Development Section was invited to participate with a group called the California Economic Summit. Uh, this is a group of uh, politicians and economic leaders in the state who decided to try and develop a plan for the state to revitalize the economy and create jobs. And there's a five-part program that they set up. Um, some of the principals uh, leading this uh, group, uh, former uh, Secretary of State George Schultz, um, Andrea Tyson, the former uh, head of the Council of Economic Advisors for President Clinton, uh, and Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom were involved in organizing the summit and a group of uh, people from around the state were invited to participate in different aspects of this revitalization effort. They focused on five different areas. One was uh, stimulating innovation in the state. California is known for its innovation and startup companies and technology and uh, the organizers were looking to come up with ways to continue that tradition as an economic strategy. Uh, also, uh, creating a better infrastructure in the state, focusing on transportation issues to ensure better uh, trade and commerce uh, throughout the state. Uh, regulations, uh, trying to uh, create a situation in the state or environment in the state where it's a less onerous uh, process uh, regulation-wise for small businesses. And access to capital was the fourth area, improving businesses' ability to access capital and to uh, grow their businesses. The final area was workforce development, and that's where we had the opportunity to weigh in with about a dozen other um, people in that area, different, different groups in that area. And uh, one of the things that we provided uh, input on was 
focusing on the skills gap that exists. I think I talked about this in previous uh, meetings here, that uh, employers in certain industries throughout the state are having problems finding uh, qualified people in certain occupations. And so that was included as part of this plan to, uh, to try and help revitalize our economy and create jobs. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention is that um, you may not know that uh, we don't receive any uh, city general funds. Most of our funds come uh, from the state and originate from the federal government. And in this political environment and budget environment, uh, our funding is always uh, seems to be at risk in one way or another. And so um, today the U.S. Senate uh, passed an appropriations, um, Senate Committee on Appropriations, uh, that keeps our funding at an equal level for fiscal year 2013, which is good news. But the House side still has some major cuts for our funding. So hopefully we can work out a situation that uh, our funding is stable in coming years. But uh, at this point, it's still fairly uncertain. But uh, we, today we did get some positive news about our potential budget down the road. Anyway, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Appreciate it. Next. Item 5B1D, Park Services. Commissioners and President Patrick, uh, summer is in full swing, even though the calendar doesn't say so. Uh, we stretched pretty thin, but we're still able to accomplish quite a bit in the uh, di different parks, <coughs> 223 tasks and projects in the uh, 20 separate locations throughout the city. Uh, I want to mention one thing about the splash uh, play areas, one at Cerritos and one at uh, Pack Edison. Those will be running. They have uh, different times and different dates that they run. Um, June, they started just this last weekend, the 15th. They'll run from 11 till 4 through June. Then come uh, July, August, and September, it'll be 10 to 6. And then in, uh, in October, it'll run from 11, also 11 to 4 and it'll be ending at the end of October. So that's what I have, we have, we have scheduled that at, that at this time. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to generate or uh, garner the land share of the people and the kids who want to play on them. And they'll be going seven days a week. Also, uh, as a meal, I have nothing to show you this time, but next week I hope to have some eye-popping uh, pictures and designs or installations at the lobby at City Hall. The next, next month. We'll look forward to that. Did you say next week or next month? I'll, I'll, I'll report it next month, but I will have it next week. Oh, okay. Thank you. Questions or comments? Backtracking, though, I, I do want to say that's wonderful news about the veterans. That was good news. <laughs> okay. What's next? 5B1E, Recreation and Community Services. Good afternoon, uh, President Patrick, Commissioners, City Staff, Ross Ferris, Community Services Manager. Um, the recreation area, the summer is in full swing. Today is the first day of our day camp program. The indoor camps uh, are filled. The outdoor camps are about 80% capacity, so we do have more room. Uh, if people want to uh, sign up for the camps, they should call the uh, customer service office at 818-548-2184, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, sign you up. The camps run uh, from now, June 18th, until uh, Friday, August 17th. Uh, it's a week shorter this year because the Glendale School District begins uh, classes uh, a week early. Uh, the aquatics... Uh, Registrations are also uh, up about uh, 30 percent, uh, and that's with one less pool. They're all at the Pacific Pool. We had a tremendous uh, registration day uh, two Saturdays ago, and uh, there's still a little room left in a couple of the classes, uh, but not much. So the aquatics program is also uh, off and running. Uh, the summer... Uh, it's going to be uh, extremely busy. Um, 
We're also getting ready to have cruise night on the July 21st. And uh, presently, we have 184 cars that are registered. We expect upwards of 300 to 350 cars. And uh, the event, uh, even though it's been scaled back uh, uh, somewhat, I think the average person won't notice too much difference. It's going to be a terrific event. And I hope everyone uh, comes out uh, Saturday, July 21st from 5.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. I'll take any questions you have. I just want to say I walked by the Verdugo Park outdoor camp, camp and it looked quite busy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is busy, and it's the first day, so everybody's kind of getting their, their feet wet. Yeah, the, the, the cars, the parking was kind of odd, right. but I'm sure it'll all settle down by tomorrow. <laughs> we were over there this morning, really. it was very busy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds like you have a busy summer. Steve. Uh, two quick questions. Swim lessons are up, but we also ra didn't we also raise the cost of the lessons, or did we? No, we did not. We did not, okay. And cruise night, are any of the nonprofits going to be able to have tables like they yes. have in the past? The nonprofit tables will be in their usual location on California, both sides of the street between uh, Maryland and Brand and Brand and Orange. Uh, presently, we have 14 um, that are signed up. Normally, we have between 18 and 22. Sorry. Any non nonprofit can, can participate? Yes. They have to be 501c3 right. uh, registered. Uh, yes. Any nonprofit uh, can participate. Do they have to be in the city? We prefer city nonprofits. First, yes. If they're not in the city, what we actually do is put, put them on a waiting list. And if we don't uh, max out, uh, which we normally do not, uh, we let them in. Okay. okay. Looking forward to so it. We'll all be okay, it's going to be a terrific summer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And Jess, I believe you had some follow-up information for us. Yes, uh, President Patrick, commissioners... I do have a few numbers. The fiscal year 11-12 budget for the Commissioners and Parks Department was $12.2 million compared to the proposed 12-13 budget for Commissioners and Park, which is $11.8 million. The total budget for the Commissioners and Parks Department, including all of funding sources, is $31.2 million. The city budget, uh, and this is the general fund budget, in fiscal year 11-12 was $170 million, and the proposed city general fund budget for 12-13 is $165 million. So the community services and parks general fund budget represents 7% uh, of the overall city general fund budget. Thank you very much. Okay, any <coughs> other questions? Then I believe we are adjourned. <laughs>